some of my favorite rivalries in sports, the ones that reside in the National Hockey League. We're looking at all of them, so let's get it. And as to be expected, yep, the Habs, but then the Leafs are actually, actually I don't think they're that much higher compared to like when I, I haven't looked at these for a while, so I don't remember. And then yeah, that makes sense, Lightning fans not being too fond of the Bruins, and then this makes sense as well, but wow, technically Lightning have a bigger rivalry with the Bruins and the Leafs, and the Canucks, oh, wow, right behind the Leafs. Interesting. Even higher than the Sabres. Oh, no, no. Actually, no. Never mind. <laughs> Just that uh, Bruins fans have a bigger problem with the Canucks than the Sabres. It's not by a huge margin, but that's interesting. And then uh, we've got another Atlantic Division team in the Panthers. And then we've got the Hurricanes. They have played each other. I mean, they the Bruins did sweep the Hurricanes the last time they played each other in the postseason. But, you know, still a little bit animosity there. And once more, this is pretty much to be expected. The Bruins, yep. And then the Leafs, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And not much towards any other team, it appears. Although you can't say for the same for others. The Sens and the Lightning have a problem with the Habs. Interesting. Just because they're in the Atlantic and, I mean, this is a Canadian rivalry. I mean, they did have a rivalry in the past, the Habs and the Sens, but, like, I feel like it's way old ago with, like, the first rendition or the old Ottawa Senators, I should say. This honestly makes me wonder where the Nordiques would be on this list, just simply because I'm hearing so much that that was, like, the biggest rivalry in hockey. So I'm... Oh, man. I would love to know. And for the Lightning, uh, so the Bruins and the Habs are still higher than the Panthers. To be fair, it's not as high. Oh, but wow. I guess I'm actually kind of surprised. And then, yeah, the Bruins and then the Habs and then the Jackets have a problem with the Lightning. Interesting. And then the Wings, they did play each other a couple of times in the postseason. And for Toronto, ah, uh, they are a team that truly does have three rivals. There's definitely more animosity from Sens fans towards the Leafs than the other way around. Yeah, I mean, this makes sense. Sabres fans having a bigger problem with the Leafs than the other way around. That makes perfect sense. Last fans, as... I mean, I guess it's not just Sabres fans who say that, but still. And, uh, this is an original six rivalry, although the Wings haven't really done much in their time in the Eastern Conference yet. I mean, they are looking good soon, but... You know. And so the Florida Panthers, as we have previously seen, the Lightning are number one for them. And then the Bruins and the Habs, wow. So it's kind of like the uh, Red Sox and Yankees. <laughs> and it appears like no other team has a problem with the Panthers, interestingly enough. Oh yeah, and then the Islanders, because of uh, whatchamacallit. Especially with the uh, Trocek thing. And so the Red Wings don't really have many rivalries, or they haven't really developed their rivalries with the Eastern Conference just yet. Yeah, the Hawks and the Avs, I mean, that makes perfect sense. We'll see what happens because the Lightning seems like it's more even as far as dislike goes, and then they have a problem with the Leafs. I mean, who doesn't have a problem with the Laughs? And the Jackets have a problem with the Wings. That's interesting. But the Jackets did used to play in the same division as the Wings, and obviously one of the most fierce rivalries in NHL history between them and the Evs, and then this was honestly such a great rivalry when it was a thing. And so the Sabres, and yeah, the Leafs and the Bruins, all right, yeah. And yeah, the Leafs being higher, that makes sense. And uh, it seems like, because it's been way too long since the Sabres have made the playoffs, so disappointing, because I've been expecting, uh, but I don't know, man, it just, Anyway, and I've seen this before, but this is still very surprising to me, or this is still kind of catching me off guard, because the Hurricanes are the ones that beat the Sabres. Seems like they don't really have any rivalries since they're never really consistent enough. And now the Sens, yep, as expected, the Leafs number one, and then the Habs. No other team. Huh. I don't know, maybe Sens fans can enlighten me on what this could be missing. So, we're staying in the Eastern Conference and going over to the Metro Division, and we got some juicy rivalries in this division. Not as much here, though, with the Jackets, because they do have a problem with the Penguins the most. That does make sense, because I've seen that before. Then the Lightning. 
that's interesting. And then the wings. But nobody really has a problem with the jackets because they haven't done much of anything yet. So, you know. Oh, capitals, capitals, capitals. And yep, as expected, and then the rags and then the flyers. If this was the 80s, I feel like the aisles would be higher. Yeah, because the I Islanders used to beat the capitals more often than the penguins. And in general, it's usually the penguins or the Islanders that beat them in the playoffs or the Rangers for that matter. But they've had more even results with the rags. This actually, I was kind of expecting this to become a rivalry canes and caps, but it seems like it's one-sided. And so for the Devils, yep, as expected, the Rangers and the Flyers, that makes perfect sense. The Hudson River rivalry, and uh, the Devils don't have a problem with any other team outside of these two. Interesting. But yeah, this is definitely to be expected. The Rags are their biggest rival, and the Flyers are another big rival of theirs. And now Philadelphia. This is kind of interesting. It's I would have thought that they would have more of an issue with the Devils, to be honest. But, I mean, it's not non-existent, but it's not as big. I mean, it definitely makes sense that this is the biggest rivalry. I mean, th this is pretty much no question that Penguins and Flyers <laughs> is like one of the biggest rivalries in hockey, maybe even sports. And then, yeah, they definitely have a pretty sizable rivalry with the Rags, too. And the Hurricanes. They don't have anybody that dislikes them, apparently. Or at least that much. I mean, I guess the obvious answer is that, like, they haven't really played many teams. They've just gone on deep playoff runs outside of recent years where they just, like, make the playoffs regularly. So the Capitals are their least favorite team, and then it's the Bruins, and then it's the Sabres. Islanders, we know which one this is gonna- yep, we already know that was gonna be the case. And the Penguins, huh. I wonder if Islander fans do have a problem with other teams outside of the Rags. Cause I kind of expected this to be like their only rival. I mean, I guess this was kind of a rivalry like way back when, but I, but to my knowledge, the Islanders are the ones that usually win. Yeah, if this was like the eighties, then this would be higher more like more than likely. But since these two teams haven't really faced off that much. And since the Islanders were kind of not good for a while and poorly managed for a while, then they haven't really had many battles. It's just the Battle of New York. Ah, the Penguins. Yep, as expected, the Flyers, and then the Capitals after them. That makes perfect sense. But uh, teams don't really like the Penguins in general. It's just Jackets fans apparently have deep hatred for the Pens. I kind of half expected this one to be a little bit higher, but at the same time, I wouldn't expect this one to be as high as like other rivalries the Rags have, so... Ah, the rags. This should be good. Yep, as expected, and this is pretty even. I'm kind of surprised the flyers aren't a little bit higher in rivalry points, but I suppose they, uh, the Islanders are just that big of a rivalry for them. And I feel like the Penguins would be higher. Oh yeah, they have a bigger problem with the Penguins than they do the Capitals, but since Caps fans have a bigger problem with the rags than Pens fans, that's why you have it like this. So we can make our way to the Central Division now, and there are actually some good ones here. The Wild are the number one rivals for the Colorado Avalanche. They have had some battles in the postseason. They face each other in the postseason a lot, and I've seen Wild fans have a big problem with the Avs and vice versa. I don't think this rivalry is as known by other NHL fans, and in fact, I didn't even really think of it until I saw this years ago. And then this is an old rivalry. It's not exactly the same. And ah, little bit of a rivalry with the Knights, given how they were kind of the supreme teams of the NHL. And for the Hawks, yep, as expected, this makes perfect sense. I kind of expected the Preds to be a little bit higher, but yeah, I mean, it would be one-sided and they do have a problem. Oh, oh wow, the Preds actually have higher rivalry points for Hawks fans than the Kings do. Interesting. And then yeah, the Kana yeah, that makes sense. That is pretty much one-sided. And yeah, I, I can see that too. Stars fans having a big problem with the Hawks. And then Wild fans having a big, yeah, that makes perfect sense as well. And then, obviously, these are two very iconic rivalries. This is one of the biggest rivalries in hockey. And then this, I mean, this was one of the biggest rivalries in hockey 
and it's an original six rivalry too. But since the Wings are in the Eastern Conference now, it's not the same. And now the Blues, yep, as expected. I kind of would expect us to be on here. Oh, wow. I'm a little surprised that we're not on here. But in the same breath, I feel like we wouldn't... Be I don't know. I don't know, honestly. Yeah, I'm not expecting us to be, like, super high or anything on this list, but, you know, hey. But, yeah, I mean, Stars fans, yep, I definitely can see that. And then, I mean, the Star, the North Stars used to beat the Blues a lot. The Red Wings used to beat the Blues quite a bit, too. You know what's funny about this? It's, like, reversed from how it is in baseball. Like, the Cubs were the team that suffered a while until they finally won it, and then they got hated by the rest of the NL Central, or maybe it was like that before that, but still. Like, they suffered for a while, and they finally won it, whereas the Cardinals were the team that won. And then for here, it's the Hawks that won it for a while, and the Blues suffered for a while until they finally won. So that's interesting. It's funny how the Red Wings weren't on there, but I guess it's been quite a bit of time since that was a thing. All right, now the Coyotes. Ah, the Kings, all right. So still the Kings, even after everything else. I mean, and no other team. That's interesting. But uh, press F to pay your respects to the Coyotes and Coyotes fans for having terrible ownership. As an Ace fan, I feel that. So, so Winnipeg. Ah, the Wild. There you go. They are very close to each other, and they did play each other in the playoffs, even though the Jets pretty much dominated. It still is, it makes sense that it's their biggest rival. And the Preds, yeah, that also makes sense. Honestly, I'm wondering, like, if the Jets, like, become consistently good, who would they put, or how... I'm honestly wondering how these rivalries would change for the Jets once they become consistently good, or rather, once they actually start like going deep in the playoffs more consistently. So the Hawks makes perfect sense. I know they play in the Central, obviously, but I didn't have a clue who else would be on this because they haven't had as much success or as much like battle, as I should say. But given the Stars did eliminate them, I guess that's kind of the case. And then the Blues, because they became unliked, I guess, after that. I don't know. But yeah, this makes sense, though. And the Jets have high enough reverse rivalry points for this to be the second biggest rivalry that involves the Preds. And then the Stars right behind that. And then the Blues. And then the Ducks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, I'm actually kind of surprised that this isn't higher, because <laughs> I actually forgot about this for some reason. <laughs> so, the Dallas Stars. Interesting, they don't have as much. But yeah, the Ducks, I guess, back back in the day when they were a part of the Pacific Division and when they played each other in the playoffs. And uh, yeah, I guess definitely now, given the Blues and the Hawks are the biggest snakes in the garden for them in the Central. I wonder how much this is factored based on, like, well, we'll get to that, actually. We'll get to that, but... So the Predators are technically the biggest rivalry they have because of the reverse rivalry points. Because even though they have animosity towards all these other teams, there aren't enough reverse rivalry points. And now the Wild, yep, as expected. The Avs, the Hawks, and the Jets. And yeah, I can definitely see that. But yeah, the Avs being number one, that makes perfect sense. And then the Hawks being number two, that also makes perfect sense. I wonder what Wild fans have to say, because I definitely have seen Wild fans say that their least favorite team is the Avs, and uh, they're not really fond of Denver teams in general. I mean, I don't know if that's true as much for the Nuggets, but I definitely have seen a Minnesota fan say that, like, they can't stand the Avs or the Nuggets. The most unlikable team in Denver is the team that they like the most. The Wild have yet to, like, be serious contenders on a regular basis and in general at all, so. So the Central was a lot more boring than I thought, to be honest, but we got some goodies here with the Pacific Division. The Flames and then the Bruins and then the Hawks. So the Bruins higher than the Hawks. I guess I can see that. I'm honestly, I'm honestly very curious as to like how the hockey guy gets by in Vancouver or like what people think about in Vancouver. I mean, I do see like more often in hockey than in other sports that like people are fans of like two teams, two or more teams. I wonder how 
this is received in Vancouver, or how the Hockey Guys fandom is received in Vancouver. And then there's the Flames, obviously number one, that makes perfect sense, and it's the most mutual it appears, although they do have a bit of a mutual one with the Oilers as well, and the Kraken. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, I'm very interested in seeing, like, Kraken and Canucks become maybe even as big as, like, Whitecaps and Sounders. Oh, here we go. Now we get to the Battle of California. Yep, this makes perfect sense. Kings number one, and then there's us right after them. But yeah, this is a pretty sizable rock rivalry. I mean, the whole. If you ask me, this is the best three-team rivalry in hockey. People have mentioned Bruins, Habs, and Leafs, but the Bruins and the Leafs have only recently developed that, and it hasn't been as consistent. And also, Habs and Bruins kind of towers over the other rivalries. Although Leafs and Habs is pretty sizable too, but, you know. Honestly, I would have thought the Predators would be a little bit higher, but, I mean, it's been kind of years, so. And then the Stars still have animosity towards the Ducks, or Stars fans, I should say. And it's pretty much even between us and the Ducks. And we've got a goodie here. Yep, the Battle of Alberta. We already know that's going to be. And Oilers fans have more animosity towards the Flames. Not by a whole lot, but wow. And then, yeah, then with the Canucks. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, is there data on the... Oh, there's data on the Vegas Golden Knights now. Oh wait, yes, I, I knew that because I saw the Avs one already, but anyway. There didn't used to be data on the Vegas Golden Knights for quite a bit of time, and they have 60 rivalry points towards us. I can't say I'm too surprised, to be honest. I can't say I'm surprised at all. And then the Avs, and then the Kings. But yeah, this rivalry between us and the Knights Towers, this makes perfect sense. Thank God the Stars eliminated them this time around. We have another ugly ass team, and ah, Kings fans have a bigger problem with us than they do the Ducks. That that I've seen that before though. That that's been the case for quite a bit of time, and I think given the frequency of playoff matchups between us, that makes sense. And this is like primal battle of California, although this is also primal battle of California, even though I feel like I mean no, it, it's pretty much mutual. It's it's mutual between all. <laughs> And for the Coyotes, their least favorite team is the Kings, so... The Hawks, or Hawks fans don't really have as much of a problem with the Kings, apparently, but... I mean, there still is some animosity from when they faced off early on. And actually, this has gone down as of late, because this used to be, like... the Haw It used to say that the Hawks were the main rivals of the Kings, and that the Kings would think of the Hawks as main rivals, but... It's gone down as of late. And the Kraken apparently don't have data, even though they have 45 rivalry points against the Canucks. How sway. Uh, we got another goodie here, the Oilers, obviously the Battle of Alberta, yep, that's gonna be, that's pretty much a given. But they do have some animosity towards the other Western Canada team, although it pales in comparison to how they feel about the Flames, it appears, so, yeah. And saving the best for last, the final team of the NHL and the Pacific Division. The team that just scored the number one pick and is looking good for the future with all they have, the San Jose Sharks. And the Kings are still number one on here. I can't say I disagree too much, but honestly, as of late, more Shark fans, at least out of all the Shark fans I interact with, more Shark fans have a problem with the Knights than the Kings. Have a bigger problem with the Knights than the Kings. It's actually a little corny how they, how some of them talk about the Knights, but I mean, yeah. Pretty much even between the Knights and the Ducks on here, which is interesting. Maybe there needs to be a little bit more, but I don't know, maybe more buildup. Because it's not just how fans feel, I think it also has to do with like history and stuff. So I don't know, I mean, there's definitely more history, but it's not as deeper <laughs> between us and the Kings. It's not as uh, it's not that much deeper with us and the Kings than it is with us and the Knights. But I mean, yeah, I guess this is proof that Sharks and Kings is one of the biggest rivalries in the NHL, and you can debate a wall honestly, because the Canucks used to be on here. They aren't on here anymore. I, I personally don't like the Canucks, but. I do acknowledge that team isn't really there anymore and it's different now, so it's not the same. 
And honestly, if you talk to Shark fans like a few years ago, then the Blues would probably be somewhere on here too. But I mean, yeah, the Kings definitely are the principal rival. These are definitely the principal rivals. And these are like my three least favorite teams in all of sports. Well, they are some of my least favorite teams in all of sports because Tottenham and the Broncos and the Chiefs are still going to be pretty up there for me. And so those are the NHL rivalries. I'd imagine a lot of you are hockey fans, so if you want some more hockey, here are last second game winning goals in the postseason. If you want to see more of this series, you can check out the MLB rivalries video I posted not too long ago. And then I also have every series winner from 1980 to 2023.